Hey everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here. We're back. We're doing a best of three Kaldheim draft. Mythic Quake Bringer, super strong mythic card here. Five drop, five four, and it deals two damage to each opponent. If it's on the battlefield or if it's in your graveyard and you control a giant, really, really good card. And it's got foretell. Yeah, it's an amazing mythic. Other good cards in here. I like the Vicious Return. It's a tough tough card to play sometimes but it's it's decent set of effects on that i like the ruined crown i like port i like master scald i actually like the courser it's evasive and the ability is relevant in a uh, saga format yeti is certainly playable berserker is playable good synergy with the common it's right next to uh, I haven't really played the Giant, but I've played against it plenty. I think the Raider's playable, Lindworm is obviously playable, and that's about it. Let's take the Quakebringer. Alright, follow-up pick. Well, in red we've got a Cavalry, a Breakneck Berserker, and a Giant. Well, this is a Giant, so it technically could be in the same deck as Quakebringer, but I don't think that's what I'm looking at. Hmm. Kind of not feeling any of the cards in here, so I might take the Highland Forest. I think the best card is probably Maya by quite a bit. problem with Maya with Quakebringer is that they're very, very far apart from each other. Like, I could just go five color, but taking Highland Forest kind of makes sense to me because it maybe lets us splash green. Probably still can't splash Quakebringer. But if I don't end up green, it could make us help us to splash green or get like Glittering Frost to ramp into Quakebringer, something like that. Green also has Changelings, which will work with Quakebringer as well. Good argument there. I like the Shadow Sage. Hawk is playable. Cavalry and Berserker are playable for an aggro deck. I mean, Quakebringer could top out an aggro deck, but I think we'll just take the Snowland for now. We're not giving up anything insane for it. And it possibly still keeps us on a Quakebringer path, ideally. Like, now we could follow up with Arctic Tree Line, but there's Gladewalker, which is a giant for Quakebringer. In red, there's just the Seize the Spoils. In blue, we have Augury Raven, which, I mean, is it Giants? Is totally a thing. And Raven is a good card. Gladewalker is certainly not the strongest card here. Hmm. I can take the Seeker. Seeker is pretty good, but I also don't know if we're green. This is tough. Valkyrie is good. She, you know, the Warrior is good. We might not be able to make this Quakebringer work. For now, I think I take the Arctic Tree line. I'm just going to sort of see what's open and take some snow in the meantime. This is this is tough. All right, now at least we're seeing good red cards because I love Dwarven Hammer. I do love Dwarven Hammer, even if uh might be a little bit slower. It's just a good value artifact. You pay five mana for a five drop, or uh, pay five mana for a five one trampler, and then you can reattach it as necessary. There's also a Lindworm in here. Good big card there. I think Hammer kind of gives you more late game resiliency. Lindworm kind of lets you play the long game too. They both kind of play the long game. It's just the Hammer turns all of your other creatures into threats, which I like. Like it's just an, you always have that mana sink available. I think that's why I like the Hammer so much. And it keeps us with the Quake Ringer in red for now because we don't know what our second color is so probably take squash if we want to stick with red and maybe make a giant deck work otherwise avalanche collar is obviously good and it would put us more in an is it giant deck but if i take squash here we still can find changelings in green make these lands pay off maybe find snow synergies if you don't get enough giants it's not very good I don't want to pay five mana for it, but I'm happy to pay two mana for it. It's also a snow island in here, but I think we'll take squash and see if we can make a giant deck work here. Like, I can take the Gladewalker now. Gladewalker looks a lot better when I already have a squash and a Quakebringer and a Dwarven Hammer. 
I'm a little more inclined to take it. There is Provoke the Trolls, which is playable, but oftentimes I don't think it's that good. Probably getting a cheaper creature would be fine. And if we can find the Changelings in green, like Masked Vandal and Gladewalker, Squash will certainly be good. And Fight Spells will be good, too. Tormentor's Helm's a great card, I just I don't think it's for us. I feel like we're going to be more of a mid, mid-range late-game deck. Take another Squash. We can. We only have two Giants currently, but we can find some more. Or we could take the Blizzard Brawl, but I'll take the Squash. We've got all these Cinderheart Giants. I mean, they're going to be more playable if we find Ramp. Like, if we find, like, Glittering Frost on the wheel or anything like that. I guess we could take the Cavalry as just a two-drop, playable two-drop. Unless I'm splashing Wither Crown. I don't think I am. So we can take the Raider. Or we can take the Cinderheart Giant now. I might try out Cinderheart Giant. Like, you can never have enough two drops. But if we end up with some ramp elements, the Giant will actually be good. Alright, we got the Glittering Frost. Haven't played this card in a long time. But it is good for what we're trying to do. Jumps us from 3 to 5. And potentially lets us power out some Cinderheart Giant. Actually, got that Glade Walker back. Alright, that's... That's a great sign. So now we've, we're up to four giants, which is good. I don't know if we're going to be a cavalry deck. It's fine just as a solid two drop. Vault Robber kind of makes sense in here. Otherwise, I could take the Tormentor's Helm but or the Raven Wings. But I think we're actually a deck that might need some actual ramp elements here to get to our expensive stuff. I don't think Vault Robber's a great card. Certainly worse than Tormentor's Helm. But for what we're probably doing... I think I'm just going to cut the green card here. Because I think we've got some high value spells. So we're really just looking for some ramp elements to get to our late game. Uh, yeah, so we have the, the Frost and the Vault Robber. Vault Robber is kind of a unreliable ramp card, but it is a ramp card in red. So can't ask for too much more. Well, I'll take the Provoke the Trolls now. I mean, Cinderheart Giant is expensive enough, and there's plenty of cheaper threats, I would say. All right, well, a Psyche is actually good for this deck, but man, is it ever... Oh, it's always difficult to pass that pack, mate. So the upside of a Psyche in this deck is that it jumps us... Once again, it jumps us from 3 to 5 as well as gives us a blocker, and it fixes our mana... And it turns other legends into rampers. Not that we have any, but it's kind of cool. It's also a mythic. I mean, it's a good effect. I don't think we're going to be able to play the Prismatic Bridge. Can never go wrong with a Packmate. There's also Frostbite and a Gladewalker. A lot of good cards in here. I think we might just go with Psyka, though. I just like the fact that it ramps, fixes, blocks, and possibly turns our other legends that we may or may not get into ramp elements as well. It just feels like we'd more realistically be able to get to squash and giants and all that stuff, all those goodies. So hopefully get the Glade Walker on the wheel. There's no way we'll get Pac-Mate on the wheel. All right, this one feels like an easy Pac-Mate. Uh, obviously good. I mean, there's an Outrider in here. We do have a couple Snowlands, but I'm not sure they're going to pan out. And Splashing Binding of the Old Gods actually seems just fine for a deck like this because it also ramps. But we're going to take the pack made here. I pass one pack made for a Mythic. Not going to pass the second one. Well... Yeah, I still have yet to play the Tyrite Sanctum. Um, could do Dwarven Reinforcements, could do the Outrider, could do the Horizon Seeker. So Seeker is kind of a cheap way to... not Well, it doesn't really ramp, but it's an option. I mean, we already have a couple expensive things. Outrider is pretty good, though. Be another 5-drop to jump into. Cinderheart Giant's expensive. And it, by the time you've gotten to Cinderheart Giant, it doesn't really matter if you can play Squash. I'm much more willing to play 17 lands, too, with something like a Seeker, I suppose. Because it just helps you find the lands. I mean, they're both good. Probably just going to go with the Seeker, I think. We don't really have incentive to play Frost yet. I mean, we could find some snow stuff. 
like Ice Side Troll, for example, but uh, not much here for us. I mean, Tormentor's Helm, once again, good card. I don't think it's what we're going to look for. We're probably with some of these ramp elements more of just a mid-range deck. So maybe just take the Snow Mountain here. So we're not splashing Vega. We're not splashing Kai's Onslaught. Yeah, we'll take the Snow Mountain. I mean, if we get World Sculptors, too, that's going to make these Snowlands a lot better looking. Or if we get, like, a Frostbite. Okay, well, we could take Snakeskin Veil here, or I can take the Ice Side Troll. Got eight creatures. I guess we can take Troll. We already have three Snowlands on color. So, all right. Troll's a fine card. It can buy time. I'm not sure where it fits best. Is it a better defensive or offensive card, or does it play kind of equally well in both if you have the snow to support it? I'm really not sure. It seems like it's good in both. Kind of a versatile card. I like Firewalker. Uh, I might just take the Snow Forest, though. We're kind of doing good on playables, so even though both of these cards are good, just taking a Snow Forest here kind of opens us up for more Snow Value cards. Hmm. Bit of an all-around miss here. Could actually take the Snow Swamp. Technically, we could find it with Seeker. I don't feel like we're playing any of these cards otherwise. I don't need a Scorn Effigy for any reason, other than if I'm Creature Light. I mean, I don't need the Snow Swamp. We can play any Swamp if we were going to splash something. I mean, I guess I take the Effigy. Oh, don't really want it. Broken Wings is at least a good sideboard card here. Otherwise, yeah, we're kind of missing out on some playables this pack. Hmm. And we'll see if we get the Glade Walker back. Well, good news for us, we got the Glade Walker back. It's also the Frostbite in here, but I think we actually want the Glade Walker with two squash. The sad part is Frostbite could real, very realistically have uh, dealt three damage to something for one mana, which is really good. But we only, I mean, we, we kind of don't want to run the Cinderheart Giant. So these Glade Walkers with two squash are actually really important, I think. I guess we can take a Ravenwings now. I don't. I mean, it gives evasion, which is good for our big dudes, but... I'm really not, this really doesn't feel like an equipment deck to me. Feels like a deck that we just need to survive and we can win. I guess I'll just take a great haul and pass all these other things. Alright, I got a second troll. That's actually totally fine. I guess we'll take an ice tunnel. Doubt we'll need that. Hmm. So pack three's got to be pretty good to us. All right, Spirit of the Elder Guard is actually a good card. I mean, it doesn't ramp, but it can find snow lands, which is good. There's really nothing else here for us anyway, so I guess we can take that. And, uh, I mean, we could find a nice tunnel off of it if we wanted to splash. I don't think we're going to be a Ravenwings deck. Possibly. I just don't think it's super realistic. So we need some more creatures, but we have 12 if you include the hammer, which I do. Okay, I guess we take this. It's a big body, and we have some snow to support it. The trolls, the glittering frost, the four snow lands. Well, Warmaster, Warmaster rather, is actually a great card. The problem is... Well, we have how many elves? Three Glade Walkers, and that's it. So just three Glade Walkers. It's unfortunate. Because that means it's probably just a Grizzly Bear in our deck. Which, at that point, I guess we just take a Pack Mate and say we're good. Or we could take the Demon Bolt. It's tough to go wrong with Demon Bolt. Removal Rise, we're just looking at two Squash and a Provoke. Yeah, we probably need the Demon Bolt. Just some more interaction. It's tough to pass a Pack Mate ever. But... Having more removal does seem important to me. So we can take the Glade Walker, unless we thought it was going to wheel, or we could take the Struggle. Um, if I take Struggle, 
I mean, we need some more actual playables here too. So giant wise, we're just looking at two. We're only looking at five, which is not that many. How rely? I mean, we've wheeled two other glade walkers and I don't think we're going to wield a struggle. So maybe we just, I, I mean, I want the struggle. So I guess we'll take it and hope to wield that glade walker. Well, not bald slumber mounds, a great card. Despite the fact that there's other good cards in here, probably can wield the troll at least. So, or the haggy mob for more finishers. But it's tough to go wrong with slumber mount. I love that card. Calamity bear. Wow. Well, I wanted a giant, and boy, did we find it. Calamity bear and quake bringer in the same deck. You know what's incredible about that? Yeah, that's insane. They actually synergize too. This makes it so quake bringer deals four damage to each opponent. Wow. That was a very, very fortunate uh, card to get past. Makes our deck much stronger. All right, Frostbite now definitely seems good. There's Gladewalker in here again. Another opportunity. And the Gladewalkers, remember, they all get pumped with uh, Calamity Bearer as well. We're at 14 creatures. I think I'm going to take the Frostbite. I'm going to hope, just going to hope that we get it back. Might be greedy. We'll find out. I mean, obviously, Cinderheart Giants are pretty strong with Calamity Bearer, too. I've already got a Cavalry in the sideboard I'm not playing. I guess we can decide whether Cinderheart Giant's worth it. All right, Firewalker's good. We'll take that. Take another Vault Robber. Run Amok is good for aggro. Probably can cut Provoke pretty easily. Wow, that's interesting to see a Warmaster wheel. I mean, I guess we take it. I wish I wish it was good in here. May, you know, it's a it's definitely a card that's going to be targeted right away, so maybe that's a good thing. Mm, I think we might have missed on the I think we might have missed on the Glade Walker. We'll see. I'll take a veil here. Yeah, I think we did. I'd probably take Haggy Mob. Because I don't know about these Cinderheart Giants in here. We'll see. Hmm. All right. All right. Well, we had our opportunities to pick up some more Glade Walkers and missed, but we have a Calamity Bearer and a Quake Bringer, so this deck certainly has some powerful elements to it. I think a World Sculptor would have gone a long way question is always do i want to run 18 lands and count slumber mound as a spell you can do that 8 9 10 11 12 13 i'm more inclined to play cinderheart giants if i do that but this has foretell this is a five drop this has foretell this has foretell foretell Hmm. 13. So, four cuts if I want 17 lands. We have Spirit to find land. We have. Um, I guess Seeker can find lands. Glittering Frost ramps. I think we're off the Vault Robber plan. They're usually just not good enough. Even in here. I don't know if we're going to do the Cinderheart Giants. We can. But they definitely make the deck look quite a bit more top-heavy. We have Calamity Bearer, though. We have Quake Bringer. There's a, there's a chance. Hmm. Warmaster only synergizes with three Glade Walkers. That's it. It's probably not good enough. I think I might be on 18 lands again, still. Ways to... Cards that sort of negate the flooding would be Firewalker, Packmate, Hammer helps if you're getting flooded, it's at least a mana sink. 
Hmm. I think we might be off Snakeskin Veil. Vale. I'd rather, even though I have plenty of creatures I'd like to protect, I think I'd rather just have the spot removal of like Demon Bolt, Struggle, Frostbite, Two Squash. Oh, we also have a Psycho Witch Ramps too, yeah. So one more card and we can call it a deck. What's our weakest creature? I probably don't need two trolls. I, I don't mind being five drop top heavier if I've got ramp elements, which I do. Troll is pretty good with struggle though. Because you can, you know, make it indestructible and fight something and kill it at five for potentially just three mana, two snow and a green. Which is kind of cool. But I could see maybe the argument for cutting the ice side troll. Yeah, I'm okay with this. It's a little top-heavy. It is a little top-heavy. But it's got some strong components to it. The Quakebringer Calamity Bearer synergy can't be overstated. I mean, Quakebringer just steals game on games on its own. And Slumber Mound kind of just counts as a spell in my mind. And we have good spot removal. We probably have enough snow to support a frostbite, I would think, with the troll, the frost, the spirit, and then four snow lands. All right. Well, I guess this is it. So more red than green, and we do have double. We have double green and double red, but we have more double red than double green. Um, we might just do an even split. I guess we can't do an even split, huh? Because we have 13 left, so... I suppose we can do the extra red, even though the green is what kind of fixes us. So, 9-10. I mean, 9-10 is certainly fine. Okay, yeah, looks good to me. A little bit on the slow side, but like I said, we've got the ramp, so we should be able to get to those Cinderheart Giants, ideally. All right, we'll run it like this. We'll see you around one. Oh, this is definitely a keep. Somehow ended up with all the snow cards in her hand. Oh, that's a, that is definitely a good draw. So how do we want to do this? Well, we'll do the forest to start. And I guess the question is do we want to do the Glade Walker or. Oh, well. Well, we want to get that Quake Bringer down. I mean, I have some definite options here. We're going to have to do this either this turn or next turn, the Fortel, if we want to play it on turn four, which we do. So that means this turn we could play the Glade Walker. And then, so we can do the Glade Walker. The next turn we can play the Tree Line plus the Fortel Quake Bringer. All right, I think we'll do that. I mean, getting something on board that could possibly trade with something seems pretty good. We could also have, I guess, did foretell with the struggle, but it's not a big deal. Alright, so we'll go tree line, foretell, pass. I mean, the good news is we're, we're playing a lot of threats here. And they really have to exile Quakebringer to deal with it. And we're just drawing gas now, so that is pretty cool. They can feed the Serpent to kill Quakebringer, but otherwise I don't really know how they exile it. And if they... Yeah, this is totally fine. We, we have a giant, so... Totally fine. 
Slumber Mound's a good draw, but I think we want to do the Haggy Mob this turn, so we'll do that. Then we can do Slumber Mound next turn and play another Haggy Mob. So they can get a snow land here, which means they could pop off both their priests, I guess, to kill the Haggy Mob. Or more more likely pop off a priest to deal with Gladewalker, which would kind of make sense. Because then we they'd at least temporarily stop the Quakebringer value. So it looks like Snakeskin Veil is going to be an amazing sideboard card against them. Because they've just got pretty premium spot removal for our big dudes. Thankfully, our deck has a lot of fat in it, so this probably is okay. Well, that was pretty good. Pretty surprised they haven't killed our Gladewalker with at least one of their priests. I'm a little bit surprised about that. So they're going to get Death Touch next turn. Um... So let's see here. We can uh, boast if I want. I don't think we want to, though. So we probably do Frost on... Um, we can do Frost on the... Forest. And then we can do Ice Head Troll. Pass. So they could do like a struggle here to kill our Haggy Mob or Ice Head Troll. We also are at Cinderheart Giant Mana now, which is good. All right, Burke Strider. It's fine. Not a huge deal. That makes sense. That would have killed Ice Hide Troll anyway, though, so I'm a little less concerned about that. They have to kill our Glade Walker, yeah. I feel like they kind of... I feel like they took a little bit too long to do that, in my opinion. Just my just my thought. So we can do Cinderheart Giant here. It feels... Honestly, Cinderheart Giant just feels like a good play, because... They have to, like, exile it. If they kill it, they're losing one of their threats. If they don't kill it right now, we play Calamity Bear, and they take a boatload of damage. I mean, if they have a removal spell in hand, it's got to be a tough choice. Because both of our threats are very serious right now. Definitely don't care about that. We can afford to take three life all day. They're taking at least two. We go Calamity Bear. So whatever blocks Cinderheart Giant, we can just squash, and it guarantees that it kills them. Because I think they're going to be pumping Valkyrie this turn, would be, a, would be my guess. Um, 
This is still lethal until they pump the Valkyrie, so I'm going to wait. Hmm. Alright. Not sure what they were doing there. So, easily bringing in Snakeskin Veil. They showed us... Well, they only showed us two pieces of spot removal, but... I just feel like the Snakeskin Veil is likely to be good. Frostbite still deals with... I don't know. They definitely look more controlling. Frostbite could be worse here. They look like they're more of a late game deck. I can cut Frostbite. Um... Our ramp elements are slightly worse against removal decks, especially if they sideboard into some, like, hand disruption. Because then we're, like, playing ramp elements, and it's not ideal. Uh, Eyesight Troll is good against Poison and Binding, but not so good against the Priests. But it's not, not a huge deal either way. I think we're okay cutting the Frostbite, though. I feel, I feel comfortable doing that. Based on what we've seen. Could go for some evasion. They showed us... Well, they have the Valkyrie, I guess. Hmm. Definitely doing some snow shenanigans. I don't like these three power creatures against them. They, they don't pair particularly well against the... Uh, but, I mean... Our guys have other upsides to them. Like, Firewalker being able to boast is good against an opponent. Neither of them can attack into Bergstrider, and they don't kill the priests. So I don't love that. But Troll can attack into that stuff. Potentially. I think about maybe cutting the Seeker. I don't know if this is right, but I think I'm going to swap it for a Troll. Wait. Yeah. Cut this. So we'll try this. Yeah, it's a little slow, but we'll keep it. So we can at least go spirit into Haggy Mob, guaranteed. Oh, that was a good draw. So now we can jump into Haggy Mob on turn four, which is good. All right, showed us an actual threat this game. So turn four, Haggy Mob, turn five, probably, I mean, we can do Spirit or Calamity Bears. So four mana. We could go Spirit plus Slumber Mound here, but I think we'll do the mob. So if I play Slumber Mound next turn, I can blow up their land the following turn. So... Showing us more aggressive cards this game, so perhaps we're going to have to do the, uh, yeah. Hmm. Guess we'll just get a snow forest. Yeah, I guess we'll bring the Frostbite back. This is tough. I don't know what to swap Snakeskin Veil for. This game, it was clear to me that we needed it, but it's only because they didn't really show us any threats until the late game, game one. So I kind of made assumptions that turned out to be inaccurate and we got beat down because of it. So that's tough. It's tough.
If I were them, I'd snap kill Spirit of the Elder Guard with Priest. Otherwise, I could easily have a fight spell and kill one of their threats. Unfortunately for us, they have two lethal things. But I guess we can go... Calamity Bear plus Demon Bolt. Problem is, it's not quite good enough. So they can double pump Valkyrie. Well, we're kind of dead either way, so we'll put the ball in their court and see how they do it. And I guess we're bringing Frostbite back, much to my chagrin. We're going to try and keep the Snakeskin Veil in there, too. I don't know how yet. I'll have to figure it out. Man, I really wish there was something I could do here. Yeah. All right. Frostbite's got to come back. Certainly would have been valuable here. Turned out to not matter because we didn't see Snakeskin Veil either. So we would have died anyway because that was the card we swapped it for. But, uh, yeah, we got just demolished that game. So Frostbite's got to come back in. We just we can't beat there. They have too many things already that they've shown us, just that game alone, that we need it for. Uh, do I want Provoke, too? Probably not. I guess we'll still we'll take a troll out, I guess. We're at 15 creatures. Yeah, that's that's fine. Could do Broken Wings. They just showed us, like, one flyer. No, I think this is it. We have the removal. It's slow, but we'll keep it. At least we can go Gladewalker and Ice Side Troll. Then we've got we've got all the main threats here. I might actually just do the Quake Bringer, get that out of the way. Yeah, that probably makes the most sense, actually. And then I'll play the Troll next turn. And then turn 4 Quakebringer, turn 5 Calamity Bear. That's pretty good. Especially if they kill the Troll with the Priest. They're rocking a lot of snow, though. Ah, that's, that's actually really good against us. So, I guess we can ditch a land here, because currently we can play everything. And Gladewalker actually seems important in case they can remove something here. So, yeah, we can attack with Troll. And we'll play the Quakebringer. have trample too no it'd be too good so it's probably poison the cup squash is good too obviously um i wonder if they're just gonna block the quake bringer anyway it's probably poison the cup right Problem is if I if I play the Calamity Bearer and they Cause I feel like they're gonna block Quake Bringer anyway. Cause I feel like it's probably poison the cup. I'm still just going to do Calamity Bear. This prevents me from attacking with Ice Side Troll. I guess it doesn't prevent me, but it's probably what's happening. So they did have Poison the Cup, which is unfortunate. But we still have another Giant in hand, so it might be okay.
No, they took five. That's good. Ah, there's a there's a value uh, snakeskin veil. So let's get in. That's actually really sweet. So I think we'll just pump the troll. Why not? Yeah. Now we have protection for Quakebringer as well. Alright, that's cool. So they can try and target that and we'll protect it. And we have squash up too, which is cool. So they can kill the troll with the priest. Sure. I mean, I could squash something here. All right, sweet. Got there. We'll see you around two. All right, we'll keep it. It's a bit slow, but we have Snowlands. We've got a Firewalker. That was a good trip. Firewalker into Calamity Bear doesn't seem too bad. And I'm probably willing to trade off my Firewalker if I have to. Calamity Bear struggles pretty good, too. I like that. Hmm, Cosima. Well, good news is I can fight that. Uh, I think we'll do... Firewalker's actually better later. I think Seeker's actually better early. Not sure if it'll matter. I would say it's certainly wise to uh, do that as quickly as possible. Put a voyage counter on it. Makes sense. Okay, well, we probably play Calamity Bear here. Demon Bolt would be my guess. Oh. I'm okay with that. Our squashes are still turned on. All of our other giants will still continue to be doubled. I like that. It's an interesting choice, actually, to do it that way. So we're missing our land drop. So it actually... Actually worked out well for him. We can't boast now. Uh, I suppose we do the Firewalker then. Not a giant like Gladewalker would be, but for the boast, I think we will. So they'll be able to do a hand refill with Cosima here. Let's see if it's out of squash range. 
Oh, they're still not returning. It's got three voyage counters on it. Wow. It's pretty good. All right. Well, one card left. I'm okay with that. So now we can go... Let's see if we get the land off the top. It's worth it here. So... Actually, how do I want to do this? Actually, I guess we can put it on Calamity Bear. So you can go Glade Walker, counter on Calamity Bear. Plus Struggle. That's pretty good. Hopefully find that land. If not, I mean, if it's not a land, I didn't want it on top anyway, so I'm okay with that. So now they can play, they can get Cosima back if they have the land, but I think we should be able to kill her, I hope. I mean, they're going to draw a boatload of spells. Boatload of cards, rather. I mean, this is where Cosima is at her best. Still not returning it? It's pretty shocking, actually. Huh. Wow. They really maximized Cosima there. They were like, screw it, I'll take an extra attack from Calamity Bear. I don't even care. Um, I mean, I can double squash Cosima. That's pretty good. Uh, that's probably a wise move. <laughs> so Glittering Frost is fine, actually. Well... Is it fine? I guess it's not. It wouldn't we wouldn't be able to do frost plus double squash because we'd only have three mana. So we probably I guess I just attack with Calamity Bear. So I'll deal two to Berserker, two to this, two to Cosima, and then finish her off with Squash. Okay. Um, all right. So we're at, we're still not quite at Cinderheart. Giant man, are we? One, two, three, four. No, we're one shy of Cinderheart. We got another squash though, and we have reduced cost, so that's nice. Cinderheart Giant at least looks good here if they play another creature. Definitely don't care about that. Well, let's see if they have the Disdainful Stroke. Even if they do, we have more, another Cinderheart Giant where that came from, so that's good. 
This crew's for three? Okay. It's actually fine. I want to see how they block anyway. Right. Well, despite them drawing, like, was it five cards off Cosima? I guess it was a 6-8, so they drew four cards off Cosima. And it wasn't enough. That's pretty amazing, actually. Uh, so they do have plenty of Frostbite targets. They just showed us a, a Squash and a Miss. That uh, might be enough for me to want to do Snakeskin Veil again. What did I dump last time for that? Could dump the Seeker. Could dump the Troll. I feel like the upside of Troll is pretty good, although we don't have a ton of snow. We have enough, but not a ton. But once again, maybe Seeker is just kind of a safe card to cut. I guess. We probably have enough snow synergies with, like, Spirit, Frostbite, Frost, where we probably want to run the Troll, probably. I mean, Seeker doesn't actually ramp, but it does help. We're running 18 lands, so we hopefully don't need it. We'll see. All right, this one, even on the draw, I think we're going to mulligan, unfortunately, because it's got the Clammy Bear and the Quakebringer in it, which is pretty nuts. But one lander, we're not going to get there. This one we'll keep. We'll dump a forest. Cinderheart Giant, not ideal in your opener on a mulligan, but what we're doing i got to admit cinderheart giant has played well for us so far in round one and uh in game one of round two so that's cool so we could do turn two foretell that would let us go turn three glade walker plus fight oh well never mind Change of plans. Ooh, missing the land? All right, we're going to... All right, technically I should have played the Pac-Man first, but whatever. I don't care. Next turn, Calamity Bearer. Turn after that. All right. They didn't find the land, and they're done. We'll see you in the finals. Well, this is a snap keep. We've got turn two Fortel. Why did they... They really did not need to put Fortel on Quakebringer. I'll tell you that much. Jeez. All right, now we'll do turn two Gladewalker, turn three Fortel Quakebringer. Ooh, it's actually really good against us. I think we might have to do the squash, sadly. I don't like that, but at the same time, I want to be able to... I want to be able to uh, cast my cards. This card's definitely good against us. Ice Side Troll's a good draw, but we got priorities here. Kind of don't want to block this Berserker, I'll tell you that much. Not when we have Quakebringer. Alright, well, the good news is, even if it's Poison the Cup, we're looking pretty good. 
Should have probably done that in a different order, but it's not a big deal. So they can kill Quakebringer. We still have the Glade Walker, so we still have a giant, which means Squash still has the reduced cost, which is good. If we draw land, we can slam a Warhammer, get a Trampler. Sure. That's sensible. Alright, well, I think we're going to go for the Warhammer play, so we're just getting in there. So, they're double blocking, so I guess we'll bust the squash here. It's not as good as I want it to be. But, it does make sense. And we'll drop the troll instead. Without any snow, but that's okay. This Slubberbound has potential to be quite good against them if they can't find a second green. Oh. Well, unfortunately for us, Feed the Serpent is the one removal spell that really gets us there, but that's okay. We'll get in there. We'll drop the hammer. I like saying drop the hammer, too. That's just cool. And, I mean, Firewalker actually doesn't look better than right here. This is where Firewalker's at its best, is when you've just got... You're out of resources, and you have a ton of lands. Well, I can afford to lose three life, so I'm cool with that. And we're going to be getting our beat on here. Ooh. Close. Not quite. This is actually good for us, too. We're doing the trampling. We're going to play the Firewalker. And I think we're actually... I'd rather them kill the troll, so I'm going to equip the troll. Because we don't have snow anyway, and Firewalker can boast. So I like this more. We still can afford to lose three life. It's already uh, made us lose six life, though. That's pretty good. It's kind of interesting. I, ha I hadn't seen the lantern for so many games. And then all of a sudden, ooh, that actually got us pretty good. So Pac-Mate, we can hard cast. Um, we have Trampler with the Troll, though. So this is fine. I guess we can, let's see. We don't have a giant. No, I think we, we boast first, for sure. So we have to see what we're going to find here. Oh, wow. That's unexpected. Well, that's... Absolutely picture perfect. So they don't have Lindworm mana. We have a Dwarven Hammer. We have a Pack Mate. We're looking pretty good. Made us lose 9 life off of a Lantern, though. That's pretty strong. And they were off... Uh, I mean, they missed multiple mana drops there. Multiple land drops were missed. Rootless U is good. However, I don't think they can get there. So, yeah, we just equip uh, here and they lose... All right. I would guess they have like Lindworm in there. They've got some goodies. This might actually, this is starting to look like a match where I kind of want to take out Frostbite. I mean, they showed us targets that I can hit, but Elderfang Disciple. I definitely want the Snakeskin Veil because Speed the Serpent, one of the few actual ways to permanently deal with Quakebringer. Um, broken wings I can bring in. It blows up a lantern, but... I mean, we're slow, but that's the only target we saw. I really don't like bringing in removal like this for one... I don't like bringing in stuff for one target. Never been a fan of that. 
I don't, especially if it doesn't do anything else that we see. Like they showed us no flyers. They showed us one card out of the top. Uh, it's hard to see the top of the screen, but probably, you know, close to half of their deck. They showed us one card that Broken Wings will hit. It's usually not a winning strategy, I would think, to bring um, to bring it uh, out. You know, they probably bringing out the, the Frostbite is still a mistake. It'll end up like round one where I... Uh, where I get beat down by two toughness creatures. Let's just cut the Seeker again. I like Seeker too, but... The discard factor of their deck is going to be really good if they have Skull Raids, but... I don't want to... I don't think this the low curve version of our deck is great. Certainly not as good as this sort of mid range version of our deck. So we probably just bring in the snakeskin veil, drop a creature, have some protection, still look pretty good. We have 15 creatures. We've got the hammer. Granted, we have expensive stuff, but it's okay. Feed the serpent's actually good against Cinderheart Giant too because it's it's exiled. Oh, you you can't. You can't mulligan this hand. You just can't. Not possible. I feel like you slam attack with Firewalker whenever you can. Ah, Berserker. Well, I'm going to take care of that. Sure glad I have that Frostbite. All right, land drop there is great. So we're going to go, we'll do the Glade Walker. Actually, no, I think we'll do the Quake Bringer now. Because then next turn I can go Fire Walker. And if I miss my land drop, we're going to, I can assure you we're going to be digging for it. It is absolutely key that we get that uh, Quake Bringer out. I wonder if I have to trade here, actually. Probably not. It just seems so essential that we get the Quake Bringer out. Then again, they are playing Feed the Serpent, so... I don't know. Ah, Torgrid's Lantern. Well, now I feel like I can't really afford to take three from a Faithful. Well, that's cool. So, we'll just drop a Quake Bringer and pass. And hope they don't have the... Uh, I mean, we're going to force them to have the Feed the Serpent. If they have it, so be it. We'll play the Calamity Bear. Okay. It's acceptable. Alright. Okay. So five lands now. What is the play? Hmm. So we can drop Calam we can drop Calamity Bear and they start taking I mean, if they had Feed the Serpent, I think they would have done it. I think we'll do Calamity Bear and pass. So what this does is if they don't answer this little chain right now, they take four a turn, which is more than a Lantern does. We can still afford to take another three off Lantern. Once again, it's kind of done its job, though. It's dealt nine damage to us again. This is not a, a race they can easily win. They're, they're using a fight spell here pretty clearly. They're going to do struggle. They're still taking four damage a turn. Keep that in mind. Plus we get to attack with Calamity Bear here. Like, they're in trouble. They're in big, big trouble here. Um... Yeah, that's just mean. Now we can go 
So we can do Glade Walker and Fire Walker. Smash. They don't even have good blocks now. foretell this one so even if they play the elder fang disciple i think i'm still now i guess i'm i still think i lose three believe it or not the reason is because if they have elder fang they could make us lose our struggle for skimfar and struggle actually could just win us the game next turn if they just play like one blocker we just we just go like pack mate struggle they die but i don't want to like lose against their last card being like a Wow, we don't even have to. Uh, that's pretty incredible, actually. Wow. Well, this, this draft was a beating. Yeah, ended up going 3-0. Very, very cool. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you for the next one.